Good morning and welcome to our 10.30 service, streaming here from Christ Church, Chorley Wood. I'm David Hall, the vicar here. And so as our service begins, uh, we're going to actually begin with some opening announcements from our youth and children's team. Straight over to Bree. Thanks, David, and hello to you all. I hope you've been having a great week. Kids, if you're listening, then we've got a special challenge just for you, and you can get a prize if you participate. So what you've got to do is you've got to read a bit of the Bible, not the whole thing, although I would be very impressed. Um, so whether that's a verse or a story, it's completely up to you on what you read. Um, and to get a prize, you've just got to tell us what you read and what you thought of it whether you thought it was really cool or interesting or weird or crazy or a bit strange, bit of bit random, um, we want to know what you thought of it. There's no wrong or right. And also what you thought about God after reading it. Uh, so one of the girls in our groups uh, was sharing with us that she was reading the story of creation and how God created people. And she thought it was really weird because God had created man. Um, he had a bit of dust and he breathed into the dust, and then that's how man was created. Then man came, he popped up from the dust after God had breathed in it. Um, so she thought that was weird, and we thought that was pretty weird too, um, but also pretty cool. Um, and she also thought about God after as being really powerful, that he was able to create man uh, from the dust, and him, his breath uh, made man from the dust. Um, and if he can do that, he can do anything. Um, so that was really cool. That's what she shared with us. Um, and we would love to hear uh, what you've been reading and you can get a prize. Uh, so send those into brianna.ricardo at cccw.org.uk. Um, also just a bit of an update um, or things that are happening this week with the kids ministry. Uh, we have our Zoom meeting for those in years four and five. Um, we've been doing a bit of organised chaos, a bit of games. Um, we've been hanging out and going a bit deeper into faith. Uh, this week we're looking at the Holy Spirit. So if you want to come join us, then you're most welcome to. Then just send an email and then I can give you some more info on how to join us there. We also have toddlers online. This is for zero to five. Uh, we've been reading stories um, and singing songs and lots of other different bits of fun too. Um, so that's on the church website. Um, you can check that out after if you're interested. Um, and we've also got our lighthouse online, which we're going to go to a special promo from Alistair. Um, and then right after that, we'll go to Ben. Good morning Christchurch and welcome to Lighthouse. Each week we bring out a brand new video for those in years one to three at school. If you're a little bit younger, that doesn't matter. If you're a little bit or a big bit older, that also doesn't matter. Each week we have craft, we have games and we look at a question from That's a Good Question by J. John. If you want to know whether there were dinosaurs on the ark, then tune in to our latest video. All the information and the videos can be found on the Christchurch website. Yes, thank you, Bree. Well, good morning, Christchurch family. I hope you're keeping uh, really well. I hope you're uh, staying safe, but you're reaching out to each other. You're encouraging each other. You're still keeping uh, that sense of community uh, alive with each other. Um, just a few things to draw your attention to this morning. Just, yep, yeah, uh, one thing uh, for youth age 14 to 18. Um, just to say that we're keeping on going. We are meeting on Zoom uh, Wednesday nights, which you should all know by now. But if there's anyone who hasn't connected with us yet and you'd like to, just shoot me an email at ben.holbrook at cccw.org.uk. Um, and then the second thing to draw your attention to is our evening service. Um, perhaps you've never checked it out before, but tonight our vicar, David Hall, is preaching. We've been doing a series on the I Am Statements of Jesus um, it's been really, it's been really great to dig into that kind of uh, part of scripture. So uh, do join us at six thirty tonight on, on our on both streams, uh, our platforms, Facebook and YouTube. Um, it's a time we have we spend some time in worship. Uh, we uh, have a real sense of community um, there. So do join us if if you feel able to tonight. And I think it's over to Simon. Good morning. Hello. My name is Simon. I'm the youth minister for anyone aged ten to fourteen. This week at Rio, we have been looking at how, because we know Jesus, we can be leaders in our local communities and in our families and our friendship groups through this crisis. As we let Jesus lead us through it, we can lead others too, and hopefully also lead them to Jesus as well. We've also had a lot of fun too. On Saturday, we just 
we just played Mario Kart all afternoon, which was really good fun. Now, if you'd like to join us in anything that we are doing, you can head onto our website, the, the Youth and Children's page on the Christchurch website. that has got details of how you can, how you can get involved. But uh, now, um, shall we, uh, I'd just love to pray for us as we head into our service. So why don't we just close our eyes and, and let's pray. Father, thank you that you want to lead us through this crisis. And Father, we just pray that this morning, whatever it is that you want to teach us, through as we worship, as we open your word together, Father, we, we want to say that we are ready and we are listening. Please lead us this morning. Amen. Thanks, Simon. So we humble ourselves as we come now to our confession, and we take a moment's quiet just before we uh, come to the confession, as we look back on the week that has passed and call to mind that God is merciful and loving. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
we come now to a time of intercession, I invite you to join in with me praying together. And when I say the words, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to join in with the words, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray for your world. We ask that at this time of challenge and difficulty that you would move powerfully amongst us, that we would know your peace and that you would guide the leaders of nations who are making important decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, we pray for your church. We pray that you would help us to maintain a witness to the Lord Jesus at this time of trial. We pray for your blessing over all that is going out online and for all the different ways that we and the church around the world are engaging with people and sharing the good news of Christ. We pray that you would draw many into your kingdom and that during this time of reflection and quiet, people would consider uh, the Lord Jesus and the claims he made to be the son of God and the way of salvation and that many would walk in his way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, we pray for ourselves. We ask for your help as we navigate these difficult times. We pray that you would provide for our needs, protect and watch over our loved ones. And we pray uh, for you to help us in all we do. Help us to bear witness to the Lord Jesus. Help us to trust you for what lies ahead. And in our times of need, we pray that you would be our comfort and our joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joining our prayers together, we say the Lord's Prayer in the modern form. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 40. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowds joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safe. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, 
Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your whole household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptised at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them it up into his house to, and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. But when it was day, the magistrate sent the police saying, Let those men go. And the jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly, uncondemned men who are Roman citizens, and have thrown us into prison. And do they now throw us out secretly? No. Let them come themselves and take us out. The police reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologised to them. And they took them out and asked them to leave the city. So they went out of the prison and visited Lydia. And when they had seen the brothers, they encouraged them and departed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. Today we're looking at the subject of what it means to put Christ first and do the will of God under the title Fit for Purpose. Fit for Purpose. Well, we live in extraordinary times. Indeed, we live in a VUCA world, V-U-C-A. VUCA is an acronym standing for volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. It's a tool used in the military and business worlds for how to think about the future when all around seems turbulent and unpredictable. And in a VUCA world, you have two choices. Either you let yourself be swept along by events, or you think through the possibilities and seize opportunities. Well, the Apostle Paul would have understood this. He too lived in fast-moving times. Christ had died, risen to heaven. The Holy Spirit had been poured out at Pentecost. The early church was formed, but facing persecution. And today, in Acts 16, we find him in Philippi, where more extraordinary events occur. But Paul wasn't put off by his equivalent of the VUCA world. He was fit for purpose, and his purpose was doing the will of God and advancing God's kingdom. He had a strategy, but he also seized every opportunity. And as we look at Paul's time in Philippi, we'll see what being fit for purpose to do the will of God means for us, especially in uncertain times. And we're going to look at four characteristics of being fit for purpose. Spiritual discernment, the power of praise, wholehearted commitment to the kingdom, and being willing to stand up for Christ. Spiritual discernment, the power of praise, wholehearted commitment to the kingdom and being willing to stand up for Christ. It's challenging stuff, but it's also immensely inspiring and encouraging. So to our first characteristic about being fit for purpose, being spiritually discerning. Well, the first thing we see in Acts 16 verses 21 is Paul commanding in the name of spirit, in, in the name of Jesus, sorry, an evil spirit to come out of a slave girl who is using her powers, the spirit of divination, to tell people's fortunes. Now, Paul would have known this would enrage the slave girl's owners who earned a nice lucrative income from this. And he known, would have known, too, there could be repercussions on him. So why did he do it? Because what mattered to Paul was the imperative of spreading God's kingdom values, which includes confronting demonic spirits and deception. Now, the slave girl's powers on the surface might look innocuous, 
like fortune telling stalls you sometimes find at fairgrounds, for instance. But the reality is that they rob people of the type of life that God wants us to have. And in Deuteronomy 18.12, they're actually called abominations to God. Abominations to God. And that's why Paul, like Jesus often did, uses all the authority that God had given him to confront these powers. Well, our world is no different. New Age spirituality and the demonic impact lives. And as Paul says in Ephesians 6, 12, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And it can affect our families, our workplaces, our community. Paul was spiritually discerning, though. He didn't just charge in. In verse 18, we're told he actually let the girl follow him around for many days to discern what was going on. And only then did he act in the name of Jesus, which led to the transformation of the spiritual life of that girl and her community. Well, I wonder if we're sometimes spiritually blinkered and not fully aware of what's going on around us. Well, Paul here is an encouragement to seek through prayer and the Holy Spirit's guidance to be more spiritually discerning and then to help us to be more focused in our prayers for God to transform situations. So the first characteristic of being fit for purpose is being spiritually discerning. The second characteristic occurs in verses 22 to 25 of our passage. And it's knowing the power of praise. Now, Paul's freeing the the girl of her demonic spirit did indeed have repercussions. The girl's owners made false charges against Paul. They accused him of stirring up trouble and advocating customs that were illegal in the Roman world. Or to gloss over their real grievance, the loss of their nice little earner. And worse the local magistrates sided with the slayed owners and had Paul flogged and imprisoned. And then we see an amazing thing. For despite being badly beaten and jailed, at midnight we find Paul and Silas singing hymns to God. They were in a dingy cell, chained, writhing in pain, and yet they made the conscious choice to be joyful in praise. Astonishing. Well, I'm not sure that would have been my response. I'd be more likely to be struck dumb with fear about what was going to happen to me and feel out of control, perhaps, and abandoned by God. So how could they praise God in song in that situation? Well, I think there are two things going on here. First, They trusted God. They were convinced they were following God's call for them. They had an inner conviction that God was in this somehow, was in control and wouldn't forsake them. And knowing they were suffering for God in this way changed their whole outlook. Psalm 56 verses 2 to 4 says this, My enemies trample on me all day long. For many attack me proudly. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? So firstly, they trusted God. Secondly, they had a view of the power of praise, which is not much talked about today. Now, we sing praises to God every week. But often it stops just as like adoration and thanks. We think less less about lifting God's name on high as a means to fighting our battles. Well, Paul and Silas chose praise, not despair. They saw praise as a pathway to transforming a dire situation. 
and there was an immediate response. An earthquake suddenly struck, the prison doors were flung open, and chains were unfastened. On the 31st of March 2014, in Atlanta, Georgia, nine-year-old Willie Mirick was abducted from his front yard and bundled into a car by a kidnapper. And for three hours, young Willie was driven round the neighbourhood. But in that time, he just kept singing his favourite gospel song, Every Praise, over and over again, a song by Hezekiah Walker. He ignored the kidnappers' repeated orders and cursing to shut up. He just kept singing that worship song. And eventually the kidnapper couldn't bear it anymore, stopped the car and let Willie out. And that song includes the verse, Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise is to our God. Later, Woody described his kidnapping, saying that while he felt his fear gave way, while, while he was doing this, he felt his fear give way to faith. But his, ab his abductor seemed agitated by the song. Well, we may not have dramatic rescues like Paul's or young Willie's, but we can have faith that God hears our praise. And when he responds, Chains, physical or spiritual, get broken. And in our VUCA world, with its turbulence and unpredictability, this is so comforting. So we've seen two characteristics of being fit for purpose for God. Being spiritually discerning and knowing the power of praise. And the third characteristic is wholehearted commitment to the kingdom. Immediately after Paul and Silas praise God, two remarkable things happened. First, as we've just seen, there was a sudden earthquake. And second, they didn't flee when their chains fell off. Instead, they stayed where they were to look after the interests of their terrified jailer, who was about to take his own life. And it's this that I want to look at now. Because the reason the jailer was so terrified was because under Roman law, if a prisoner escaped, the jailer suffered the same punishment as the prisoner would have received. That he was about to take his own life suggests there were probably prisoners there who were under a sentence of capital punishment. But Paul owed this jailer nothing. So what motivated him not to flee and shout out to the jailer not to kill himself? Well, the answer, I think, is his wholehearted commitment to making Christ known. And he couldn't bear to waste any opportunity for this. In verse 30, the jailer shouts out, What must I do to be saved? And his concern was, What must I do to escape this terrible mess I'm now in and be saved from the prison authorities? But Paul and Silas seize their moment and address this man's and everyone's greatest need, our need for Christ. And Paul replies, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. Paul's unswerving commitment to Christ, when he could have just looked out for himself, brought this family into God's kingdom. So Paul's example here is a great encouragement to us to seize every opportunity to make Christ known. Even if they arise at the most inconvenient or unexpected times and disrupt our carefully laid plans. So we see now three characteristics of being fit for purpose for God. Being spiritually discerning, knowing the power of praise and wholehearted commitment to making Christ known and seizing every opportunity. And the final characteristic we see in verses 35 to 40 is a willingness to stand up for Christ. When we're under attack, 
there are typically two types of responses. Flight or fight. Flight or fight. Well, the next morning, the magistrates decided that Paul and Silas could be released, and they wanted them just to go off quietly. But Paul and Silas decided on fight, not flight. They refused to go quietly and demanded a public acknowledgement of their wrongful treatment. And what's more, as Roman citizens, they should never have been jailed without a proper trial in the first place. And the magistrates were now the ones fearful of the repercussions. But why did Paul do this when the easiest thing was just to slip away quietly? Because what always mattered to Paul was keeping his eye on the right thing to do to advance the kingdom. And here, that meant confronting the authorities. Why? Well, because it was vital for his own missionary work that his reputation wasn't tarnished. It was vital that injustice to Christians was exposed and the authorities were made to govern lawfully. And it was also vital that this new church should be left in as strong a position as possible after Paul moved on. And that meant they were ensuring there were no false or lingering impressions left about them. Each week, I get a newsletter from an organisation called Christian Concern. It highlights those areas in our national life where God's values are under attack. And that includes individuals being victimised or persecuted and prosecuted for standing up for the Bible and the gospel. And it's always a long list. And often we'll support our Christian brothers and sisters with prayer and finances. But as Paul's and Christian's concerns experience encourages, we'll also on occasion be faced with a choice whether we're willing personally to stand up for Christ too. And it could come at home, in school, in the workplace, in our local community. But as Paul shows, when we do, it can have a real impact in growing God's kingdom. That church in Philippi we knew flourished after Paul left. So if, like Paul, we want to be fit for purpose for Christ in a post-lockdown VUCA world, let's seek to develop and practice being spiritually discerning, knowing the power of praise, being wholehearted for Christ and being willing to stand up when necessary. Well, let's now close in prayer and bow our heads. In Judges 5.31, Deborah, a fearless Old Testament leader of Israel, prayed that those who loved the Lord would be like the sun when it rises in its strength. So Lord, help us to be like the sun when it rises in its strength. May we, in your strength, radiate warmth, energy, light, and help us to be wholehearted in showing people the way to you. Amen.
In a moment, we'll be coming to our final song in which we take our offering to support the work and witness of our church family here in this parish and through our mission partners overseas also. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. Um, do join us again this Thursday evening. Uh, if you uh, want to email in, you get the Zoom code uh, for our Discover programme. Uh, it'll be running this Thursday, informal conversation about the subject of the sermon, any questions that emerge from that. Before we come to our final offertory hymn, uh, our final blessing. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and those we love now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>